The overall goal of this procedure is to fabricate microsphere and silica toroid resonators with ultra high quality factors, which enable applications ranging from telecommunications to biodetection. Microsphere fabrication begins with the preparation of a clean, stripped optical fiber end. To begin microtoroid fabrication, photolithography and etching steps are performed in the clean room to undercut the silicon beneath circular silica pads and form silica microdisks sitting on pillars. The next step of both fabrication processes is to expose the optical fiber end or silica microdisc to a properly aligned CO2 laser beam. The CO2 laser beam melts the silica, forming microspheres or smooth silica toroids. The final step is to inspect the devices with a microscope to ensure proper reflow. Ultimately, line width measurements are used to determine the quality factor of the resulting spheres and toroids. The motivation for using CO2 laser reflow to make microsphere and microtoroid devices is the ability to achieve quality factors above 100 million. Visual demonstration of this method is critical because reflowing a high quality factor sphere or toroid can be difficult. Results can vary from sample to sample, so you need to watch carefully to make sure the laser beam is properly aligned and has the correct settings. To begin microsphere fabrication, select a small amount of optical fiber. Strip approximately 1.5 inches of cladding from one end. Clean the stripped fiber end with either methanol or ethanol. Cleave the stripped end with an optical fiber cleaver. The advantage of using an optical fiber cleaver is that it produces a very smooth, uniform cut. Excessive roughness or defects from a cut may cause uneven reflow, lowering the quality factor of the resulting spheres. Proper reflow is the most important step of this procedure. To ensure success, the optical fiber and microdisc samples must be properly aligned and in good condition. Proper alignment of the laser beam and use of correct intensity and time settings is crucial. Place the cleaned fiber into the path of the CO2 laser. Expose the cleaned fiber end to 3 watts of CO2 laser power focused to a 500 micron diameter spot size for about 1 second. This produces spheres approximately 200 microns in diameter. However, the size can be tuned by increasing or decreasing the diameter of the optical fiber. Slightly adjusting the laser intensity may also be necessary to reflow larger or smaller spheres. Microtoroid fabrication begins with the generation of a photomask with dark, solid circles of pre-designed spacing and diameter. Leave at least 1 to 2 millimeters of space between each circle and at least 5 millimeters of space between arrays of circles and around the edges of the mask. For this procedure, a mask was made with rows of 160 micron diameter circles, resulting in finished toroids of approximately 110 microns in diameter. Since the sample wafers must be carefully handled with tweezers, it is important to leave space for the tweezers to grip without damaging the toroids. This space provides room for a tapered optical fiber to couple light into the finished devices and allows samples to be cut into smaller arrays more easily. Photolithography and etching steps are described in detail in the written procedure. These steps cannot be demonstrated here as they take place in the clean room. Side view scanning electron micrographs are shown here from different points in the fabrication process. During the fabrication, samples are immersed in improved buffered oxide etchant, abbreviated BOE, which etches the silica not covered by the photoresist to form circular silica pads on the silicon wafer. After removing the photoresist, a xenon difluoride etcher is used to undercut the silicon beneath the circular silica pads to form silica microdisks. The amount etched should be approximately one-third of the silica circle's size, so the resulting microdisks pillar is approximately one-third to one-half of the total disk diameter, as determined by inspection with an optical microscope. The next step is to place the samples in the path of a focused CO2 laser beam. The center of the laser beam and the center of the microdisc must be aligned for a smooth, circular microtoroid to be formed. 
Expose them to approximately 12 watts intensity for 3 seconds or until a smooth toroid is formed. Depending on the exact size of the disc and the amount of xenon difluoride undercut, a slightly higher or lower intensity and exposure time may be needed to form a microtoroid. The microsphere and microtoroid devices can be imaged using both optical microscopy and scanning electron microscopy. In all images, the uniformity of the device surface is clearly evident. These are examples of incorrectly reflowed microsphere and microtoroid resonant cavities. Due to incorrect placement within the beam, the device is malformed. As a result of a poor photomask or poor lithography, the resulting toroid is moon-shaped. Shown here are representative quality factor spectra of the microsphere and microtoroid resonant cavities as determined using the line width measurement method. The quality factor represents the photon storage lifetime in the cavity. These values were above 100 million. The spectrum of the microsphere was a single resonance, indicating that the light coupled into either the clockwise or counterclockwise propagating optical mode. However, the spectrum of the toroid exhibited a split resonance, indicating that light reflects off a small defect and circulates in both clockwise and counterclockwise directions. This phenomenon occurs when there is a slight imperfection at the coupling site. By fitting the spectrum to a dual Lorentzian, the Q factor of both modes can be determined. The split resonance phenomena can occur in both sphere and toroid resonators, but is more frequently observed in toroids as they are more susceptible to imperfections and have fewer optical modes compared to spheres. A comparison graph shows the Q factors of several microsphere and microtoroid resonant cavities. Ultra-high quality factor devices have numerous applications ranging from fundamental physics studies, biodetection, to telecommunication systems. Don't forget that working with high power CO2 lasers can be extremely dangerous. You should always wear protective eyewear and follow safe operating procedures when reflowing spheres and toroids.